Welcome to Nerdities. Bitches. No topic too absurd, no statement too asinine. Meanwhile, we are Nerdy Jersey's finest. Nerdities coming at your ear holes. Stop it. <laughs> Put that tongue away. If you're not talking with it, don't use it. I am Mike. Gene Simmons over there is. Justin. Just lost our... Uh, Kyle. There he is. And as well as... Oh, we have Vinny list tonight. Because, uh... What's he going on? He's, he's with Megan's family. Uh, doing husband stuff. Yeah. He had to go out with his wife. Someone had to say <laughs> that. Uh, he's going to appreciate that. Yeah, this is going to be great and sad tonight. The little hymns. He did pick up his cookies for from Sinful Creations by Justin on his way down. So he's clearly looking to make a solid impression. It wouldn't yes, be it wouldn't be skip. wouldn't be first cuz like he's been dating her for like 12 years or some shit. Yeah, he's using your skills to ingratiate himself with the family. Yeah. We lost Kyle. I don't know where the hell he went. Hopefully he'll be back. But uh we'll make do. We'll limp along. Three voices is enough. Hell, we've had times where it's two voices. <clears throat> Oh, we used to have a show where it was just t- Justin talking to himself about wrestling. Yeah. This is how we podcast, folks. <laughs> this is how we do it. Skin of our teeth. Uh, I usually open this part up to personal stories, but the only personal shit going on in my life, I don't know if I really want to get into. Uh, I have two personal items, but one is my douche of the week and one is my nerd of the week. Yeah, then you save them for the end. Mm-hmm. Tis the structure. It's just, uh, I'll let the folks know that, you know, a couple weeks ago, my streak ended. The kid got lucky, but luck runs out for everybody. Maybe one day I'll get into it. I don't know. I'm feeling very just now. I don't think all of you are worth it. Well, speaking of luck, I just got back from Las Vegas. And hey. I didn't have any. <laughs> it was not a lady. Okay, how much how much gambling did you do? <laughs> or how much was time it? and money did you waste? I I played some slots. I was up for for a hot minute, and then I wasn't. <laughs> Vegas. So it works. Say, I, I, how up? I didn't lose like a crazy amount of money, okay. but I lost numbers, some, Joseph. So numbers. I don't want to say that number. How up, how up were you? Yeah, I was up like two hundred bucks. Like I'm was, not like a crazy gam a dog. There's nowhere nothing in like the thousands. Shit. Right when I had that. my raging gambling addiction, two hundred bucks is nothing. Yeah, I was happy with two hundred bucks. <laughs> um, the problem there's never enough. You can always win a little more until you're losing, yep. and you can never lose enough. I had a good system. Yep. Oh, he has a system. Justin had a system. How did the system work? <laughs> The system and was, how did the system work out for you? The system was I, I had X amount of money and I broke it into sections, right? And if that section hit the equivalency of the total I had, I'd cash out that and I'd put it to the side. And then I'd play the next bundle and so on and so forth. So uh, 50-50, I'd always break even. You might as well have played war. Uh, it it, um, it tend to work more often than not. Oh, aside from that, um, you got syphilis. What? What? I did not get syphilis. No, Damn. no, 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 no. Uh, it was a hundred plus degrees every day. Um, the convention was fucking phenomenal, though. But it's the dry heat. Say. Fun yeah, fact: it wasn't the, the Las Vegas, still a desert. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the convention I went to was, was great. We, we talked to a lot of vendors and got to see a lot of cool tech. Um, nerd. you guys take a get, all right. One Nathan's plain hot dog at New York, New York. You want $20. To guess how much this thing was? $20. Less. 10. I'm going to go 10. Yes. With 10. Plain. 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 $10. That, that's, $10. That's the wording. Cause like one hot get, dog. Too ridiculous. 
but it's still going to be a ridiculous number. That's why I figured 10 was right. Um, we had the Caesars Buffet because they said it was like the number one buffet in Vegas. It's not. Underwhelming. It's not. Dude, it was so underwhelming. Why did you fucking ask me? I didn't know. I didn't know you worked for a travel company. <laughs> no, just just the general food. But it, you would have been like, dude, this buffet sucks. I would have told you, Joe, that's not even one of the top three. Who told you that Caesars was the best? Uh, was it a big tra- sign outside um, of Caesars that told no, you? No. Uh, uh, Travelocity, I think. So. No, when I've Googled tra- best <laughs> Vegas uh, buffet. That Don't was... Google Justin, okay? You Justin what you need to know about travel. Because <laughs> that was not great. Talk to your phone and be like, Justin, and I say, yes, bitch. <laughs> need buffet. But just how, let's, what? how much was this mediocre buffet? $90. <laughs> Fuck, Joe. <laughs> that's fucking Disney price. No, that's not even that's, Disney That's price. more than Disney Disney price, is cheaper fucker. than Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, Disney, things at Disney are cheaper than Las Vegas. Most at, things at Disney. At least you know going into that place, it's a money sink. You're mm-hmm. not going to walk out with more than you left with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, like, that's the myth of Vegas. I could gamble. I could win. No, you can't. No. And you want to you, you go see a show? Fuck that. $200 to go see a show. The Beatles thing was right across the street from my hotel. And 200 fucking dollars to go see this thing that wasn't happening we saw we were the third day we were like we need to do something because we did two days of the the convention let's do something it was between the shark reef the king tut exhibit but he's in cairo so it was just little knickknacks or the titanic i rolled a dice because we're in vegas oh yeah that's right we know what you want to they don't though and uh we saw the titanic exhibit which was pretty cool yeah, I'm not going to lie. It was really cool to see, like, the big piece, the piece that took four years to be brought up from the, the ocean floor. Um, it's massive. It was bigger than my wall. It was huge. Um, uh, they had an iceberg, and you got to touch the iceberg. Um, plates, uh, relics, and all this stuff. And it was really, really interesting. Uh, uh, next time, the Wicked Spoon. Sir. Wicked Spoon? Yeah. Two years. Two years I'll be back. Yeah. Um Or the, the Stranger Things walked through. Or that the one free. the one at the Bellagio is real nice. Dude, I felt like walking through the Bellagio, they were gonna ask me, How much money do you make? Oh no, not enough. Out. Out. Yeah. The, the place was insane. Yeah. The water show was cool. Uh, this question may have been asked already, Joe, but did you have a favorite hotel or favorite features from specific hotels? So, I we stayed at the Venetian. The Venetian was nice. Um, the bed kind of sucked. I'll totally say that. The bed was underwhelming. Disney knows their beds. Uh, Venetian didn't. My favorite hotel, though, was Luxor. I thought that was the coolest thing. Yeah. I, I would say that that was definitely one of my favorites when I went there. Did you like did you like do rides and shit while you were there or no? No, no. Okay, because I made it a point when I went there to do like the roller coasters that were in Circus Circus, the roller coasters that's in New York, New York, and some of the rides on top of Stratosphere. Fuck that one. Uh uh-uh, uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not Stratosphere. No. I mean, I have a fear. I fear bites too, but I couldn't let my older brother do it, and then me wimp out. I was like. Nah, uh, if he's doing it, I gotta do it. Yeah, there's some cool shit to do there, man. It was, it was cool. It's just expensive. Yeah. How expensive. Was yeah. there any cool shit on the ball? On the giant? Yeah, uh, the Dead and Company were there. Um, so they did, like, a bunch of Grateful Dead things on the, uh, on the sphere, and, uh, there was a big aquarium thing they did, and you got to see, like, when you drove past it, you could see every little pixel of it. We were, like, it was right behind the hotel. Was the sphere um monorail i gotta say faster than disney not as nice <laughs> uh we're walking onto the monorail and i'm just sitting there and getting off and my buddy's just like oh good thing you didn't step in the pile of blood that was there i'm like what <laughs> blood, blood, blood just sitting on the monorail no idea everybody was offering everybody asked 
you want drugs? You want you want coke? You want coke? Everybody, everybody is asking that. It's just like, dude, just leave me the fuck alone. I don't want to give you my money. I want my money. <laughs> this right. money's reserved for the casino. <laughs> I have, I have, I have three more Vegas related questions for you, Joe. Uh huh. Okay. The first one is: Do they still have the Tigers in, in uh, MGM Grand? I did not see the Tigers. I didn't. Okay. We didn't see anything that was related to the Tigers there. Okay. The second question is Did you get to see the pool at Mandalay Bay? No. I. Oh, yes. Yes, I did, actually. Because they have an I, aquarium at Mandalay Bay, and on the walk to the aquarium, I think you can look down from the hallway at the pool. Yeah, I, we did because uh, my supervisor stayed at the Mandalay Bay, which was. Two miles, but fucking an hour to get to him. Yeah. It's insane. It's a long fucking walk. Mm-hmm. And then the third question was, um, did you did you take a look inside the real Caesar's Palace? Yes. And <laughs> Caesar does not live there. <laughs> you, did they have like a payphone bank, like a, like a bank of payphones? <laughs> We spent a little bit of time at Caesars. Caesars, the breakfast at Caesars was fucking phenomenal. I gotta say, that was phenomenal. It was goddamn expensive, but I had a California breakfast sandwich. It had eggs, ham, um, two types of cheese fontina and cheddar on homemade brioche. So good. So, so I went there before I was twenty-one, and we stayed at. Uh... What the fuck is it called? Uh, the castle one. Oh, uh, like, Excalibur. Uh, Excalibur. Yeah, stayed at Excalibur. Uh, that was I. They allowed my my parents allowed me to pick, and I thought I made an awesome pick until I went back after I was twenty one, and we stayed at Caesar's Palace, and Caesar's Palace was like infinitely better as a hotel. I I like the design of Excalibur. I really wanted to go to medieval times there. Yeah. Um, but the, the hotels were really nice. Uh, I had in and out burger, which was great. I got my Delta. I had my West coast fix in and out burger, Del Taco. Um, but do you see Terry Benedict? <laughs> <laughs> How's the bank look? Uh, I, I'm good. This I'm is me Vegas. showing my age now. You brought up Caesar's Palace. I automatically thought of History of the World. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Caesar, the main room. The main room. <laughs> Groovous. <laughs> but it, it was it was interesting. Vegas was interesting. That's how I could describe it. It's an oasis in the middle of the desert, funded by prostitution, drugs, and gambling. What's mm-hmm. not interesting about that? Proud to be an American. But if I had a bunch of extra zeros, you know, added to my salary, I think I would have fun. <laughs> I would be able to have like a lot more fun. Story. Right? One extra zero would be enough for me. It was so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was my my trip to Vegas. <laughs> Sounds adorable, Joe. Only Joe can have an adorable Vegas story. <laughs> Joe Pravda's adorable Vegas vacation. <laughs> Everyone asked me if I want drugs, and I was like, no, I'm here working. <laughs> I'm getting paid, motherfucker. <laughs> I have to be responsible in Vegas. That's, that's a, a chapter in Joe's book, Responsible in Vegas. <laughs> All right. Let's do some regular show stuff now. Yay. I noticed zero casting. Oh, I have casting. Okay. Um, unless you guys talked about it last week. Well. I, I have casting from two weeks ago. They cast He-Man in the new live action movie. But I'm, I deleted the story because I guarantee you he's not going to be the guy who plays him. This is like the fifth guy in five years. Yeah. Paul Giamatti is casted as the main villain of season one in Star Trek Starfleet Academy. So happy you can talk about this now. He's I am. so I, thrilled. I am. I don't just. I'm all for Starfleet Academy. I just don't like the 
time period it's set in. It's in the you discovery know, time period, so it's in the 32nd century. It's just a real shame that Vinny's not here to weigh in on this topic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wednesday season two of, has added some pretty big names to their cast. Joanna Lumley. She related to Carl Lumley. Yes. Steve Buscemi. Never heard of him. He related to Joe Buscemi. <laughs> Billy Piper. Ooh, Billy Piper. Mm-hmm. Don't see enough. Related to Rowdy Roddy. <laughs> and uh, is she playing a bad wolf? Oh, maybe. And Christopher Lloyd. Ooh. Those are some. Well, you know what? I've been thinking for a while. When are they going to bring in some classic Adam Family actors? Christina Ricci was on it. Yeah, she, she was. was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She plays one. Like, of, she's the, one of the teachers. Yeah, I would have had to have seen the show then. To it's really a good show. Care. Uh, Disney has cast its live action Moana. It's only six years old, why not? <laughs> well, uh, uh, Catherine Lagaia. Pacific mm-hmm. names are tricky, man. Yeah. She, she looks like. The fucking live action version of Moana. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna send the picture over. Okay, because I was about to aim to bear. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Good job, Disney, because yeah, she really does look yeah. like her. Yeah. yeah. I can live with that choice. Yeah, that's what I got for the castings. Why do you have to make Moana some Samoan chick? Trailers then? Trailers. 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 Uh, John Snow is a war wolf in uh, The Beast Within. Yeah. Is this based on a game or something? Am I am I wrong about this? Or is it just like no. A there is a game called. Oh, you're, uh, you're thinking uh, the Evil uh, Within. The movie to that. Werewolf Among Us. Werewolf. Yeah. Okay. That one came out a few years ago. Yeah, that one like to Hulu or something where it was yeah. a small town. It was like a comedic version of 30 Days of Night almost. Pretty much. Yeah. But this is a lot less comedic. Yeah. Yeah, looks pretty intense. He plays a guy who gets bit, I'm guessing, or Maybe. has always been a werewolf. I think, it's, and, I think it looks like it's a bloodline thing because if yeah. you catch towards the end of that trailer, it looks like the daughter is starting to yeah. show a it's little like bit of surprise. Yeah. So that could be pretty intense. Ah, it's a literal lone wolf and cub. <laughs> oh, no, because no, no, he's got his wife there and like a grandfather, so he's not alone. Yeah, we don't know how long they last. If it ends though with him having to take care of his daughter, uh, I'll shake my head thusly. A real pain, starring Kieran Culkin and Jesse Eisenberg, looks like uh, Lost in Translation with two dudes. Except it's set in Poland. Yeah. Which could be fun. It does look fun, but they'll constantly be playing like 30 year olds for the rest of, you know, for at least another 10 years. Good for them. Well, it's on their side, you know. It doesn't last forever. We can't all be boyish like you, Joe. It it looks interesting. Darren Culkin, that one part, actually made me chuckle when he slapped him. Uh, and uh, am I the only person who watched Smile? Vinny and I have watched it, too. Okay. Now, I don't remember your take on it, but as I was watching it, I couldn't help but think you would dislike it as much as you dislike It Follows. It's got a very similar motif to it. It it does, but it, I, mean, I, I wasn't a huge fan. Mm. Of course. Because, okay. you know... Very similar, and I fucking hate it. Follows. Uh, I just don't think it beats you to death with like its subverted fucking message. 
like it follows does. The sex is bad. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, because this is the first smile was more about dealing with trauma. It wasn't necessarily a lesson about something you've done as right. much as coping with things that have happened to you and how poorly Kevin Bacon's daughter does it. Right. Yeah. Whereas this one, it's uh, not quite Lady Gaga who witnesses someone die yeah, or like, kill himself. And is that the thing this summer? Is like concert movies? Because like... Oh yeah, that... Uh... Shyamalan movie. The Shyamalan thing, this one, the the one with Anne Hathaway that I talked about from Amazon, that's like, it's like the new disaster movie trend, it's just now it's like concert movies. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, board meetings where at least someone says, you know, Taylor Swift did great business, and I think the important thing we gotta get out of this isn't the fact that she's like a once in a generation performer, who creates her own music. It's that people really love <laughs> tours. Yes. We have to set as many things at tour venues as humanly possible. And make these things about performers, preferably female and young. So uh, that's what this one is around. That's what it seems to be about. And I, I didn't see anything in the trailer that, that like seems like they're building off of the premise. It kind of feels like more of the same but less. Yeah. That first trailer for the first smile, that was fucked up. That made me want to watch the movie. This it's seems terrible. like if they have anything good in it, they didn't want to give it away in this trailer. It doesn't even They're look like it's you. connected. Like, what happened to the cop from the last, the end of the last one? Their ad campaign was insane. Sending people in sporting events, just sitting there smiling into the camera. She was Excellently fun. creepy. Like, I do love myself some Naomi Scott. I think she's fucking smoking hot. But, yeah, the, the, the move, the, the trailer didn't grab me. Yeah, how do you build on what you've already done? And if you have built on it, you didn't show me anything. Yeah. yeah. So, maybe once it comes on Prime, I'll give it 15 minutes to see if it hooks me. Uh, was that that might have been Paramount Plus so I don't even know if I'll have the opportunity to check this for free I'm not spending money but, we, uh, I mean we have it yeah so, so then maybe eventually watch it over here yeah bunch of reviews bunch of reviews yeah uh, Joe let's you and I get uh, Doctor Who episode 8 yeah. I believe it is out of the way uh, 7 because the next seven? next week's 8 really I could have sworn that we're ending on 9 hold on or is it a nine? Yeah, wait, never mind, you're right, eight. Yes. Uh, penultimate episode of the Ooh. season. Uh, finally wrapping up this whole who's the weird old lady that's haunting them throughout every place they drop in. The, and, it's the human iteration of the TARDIS, right? No. Well, no. no. They, they set up early in the season, they remind everybody that the Doctor has a granddaughter. Oh, yeah. And I thought that was just like, oh, that's kind of a non sequitur moment. But there's nothing non sequitur in this because the notion comes up again and you're meant to believe it's going to be a huge family reunion. Mm -hmm. And not quite. No. His performance in this episode I thought was great. It was, it was having a lot of fun. It was, uh, I don't think it's the best of the season. No. Uh, Boom and 73 Yards were definitely the highlights. Yeah. Well, he was barely in 73 Yards, but he was great in Boom being limited to one spot for the vast majority of the episode and giving that, that really heart-wrenching performance at times. The, um, I did like the swerve. That was great. Um, mm. Is that an established thing? This... this uh, Duke Tech? This, yeah, this god, essentially. Um, he, he was a fourth Doctor villain in the Pyramids of Mars. Okay, so it's something that is a callback. Yeah, it's a callback. Um I'm intrigued because technically we didn't get an answer about Susan Twist or Susan Triad. We didn't get she a... She seems to just be a tool. She seems to be something... You never know. There might be something more to her, but I think she was a MacGuffin. Not a MacGuffin. She was a red herring. The makeup at the end was pretty good. That was pretty sweet. I do enjoy the uh, the super team they have going on at UNIT. Yeah. That was pretty great. They have all the, the important minds together helping them get shit done and I really don't understand how this is going to relate back to Ruby Sunday's story though they, they 
set that up and then kind of just push that aside. I I question on who the mom is because when she glitched that one part when you're gonna see her face mm-hmm. and she glitches across the screen and you're like I do have a feeling though why they brought Rose back um, because uh, his TARDIS is you know oh yeah I'm pretty sure Tennant's coming back in this last episode if if he doesn't his TARDIS is yeah there could be something with it because they even drop a line in there the, the current doctor's like how's your uncle yeah how's your uncle I like that yeah uh, I have a feeling they're not going to show who that woman is. It's not going to be her mom. Or if they do show her, it's going to be somebody else. It might even be Ruby leaving her baby version there. Dude, I heard that theory. Yeah, and they're going to string this whole thing along. Or she could have been created by time. Because there's just something very sci-fi about her with like the mm-hmm. snow happening. I have a feeling it's going to be another red herring. It, the point of her is not who is the mother. The point of her is who is she. Yeah, who is Ruby Sunday. Yeah, which could be cool. They're doing a great job, and will the next one end on a cliffhanger? Because we know we're going to get a Christmas special. Mm, probably. I'd love to see, if we don't get Tenet back in this one, I'd love to see a Christmas special where they have to interact again. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I love seeing multiple Doctors together. Uh, very quickly for myself, I watched Barry episode one the other day. Finny isn't here, so he'd be annoyed. No, oh, Barry's good. Barry is very good. Good. At least the first episode. He's a, he's a bit slow from Hader's perspective. He doesn't do much. But uh, Henry Winkler has an incredible scene about halfway through the whole thing. And the premise itself of him supposed to take out a guy, but kind of becomes friends with him and gets pulled into this. this the scene that the guy does was the most douche chill moment I've had <laughs> in quite some time. And has anyone else watched the first time or any of Barry? This guy, like, he was supposed to kill this guy. The guy's like, oh, I need your help. I need a scene partner. And pulls him in. And he's, like, kind of screwed now. He can't kill the guy if, since the guy's seen his face. Mm. It's the Gary Oldman scene in True Romance. But he's just, he's not making it his own. He's doing his Gary Oldman impersonation as the guy. Yeah. And it's so fucking douchey to watch. It's good. I, very good show. Yeah, very fun. Uh, who else has seen any of the boys season three? We're at now four. We're in season four now. Yeah. Yeah, I watched that first episode. Okay. I haven't watched the third one yet. I'm I'm parsing this out a bit. I'm yeah, my time. We, we are too. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more of the boys we love, isn't it? They're still doing it. They, It's... It's kind of unfortunate I'm watching that and I'm comparing it to something else we're going to review soon. And it's like... (laughs) That's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair. I'm telling myself as I'm watching it, don't do this. They're they're apples and oranges, dude. They're apples and oranges. They they get away with so much more on this show than the other one. But it does come down to creative storytelling. It's... it's, Yeah, I was going to say. It's not even necessarily what they get away with on The Boys. It's... It is the story. Right. Character development. Yeah. It is. Dude, that moment. First, let's let's talk about the fact that they're they're gonna try really hard to give some kind of half assed redemption arc to Homelander. Uh, you think? The whole realization from his point of view of he is he is dying. Well, he's getting old. Yeah. He's, he will die. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, like, coming to terms with the fact that the world he created around himself is not necessarily what he needs. And and by putting too much fear into everybody and turning them into fucking yes-men, he's absolutely, yeah. like, kneecapped himself. That bit with A-Train and the yeah. fucking deep at the table... Dude. The Deep might be my favorite bad character ever. Yeah. Not even like like he sucks as no, like he's an asshole. He is the epitome of toxicity. Next to Homelander. He's one of the worst people ever. Yeah. But he every line out of his mouth is fucking hilarious in its own way. <laughs> yeah. Uh 
Homelander, the, one of my favorite things about his story throughout all the seasons is he will always, always, always be manipulated by a woman. Yeah. And he sets himself up for it half of the time. This time he literally set himself up to be manipulated by a woman. That, that whole thing is going to backfire on him so fucking hard. Because it's already established that she is smarter than he is. Yeah. She, she is the smartest person in the world. Yeah. She's, but also, I was talking already about it, her her Achilles heel is laid bare, too. Sure. Like, she can't not tell people. She can't not abuse her intelligence. Yeah. And it's going to get her in a... It's just going to piss him off one day, and he's going to kill her. But he's, she can't stop herself. It's her... It's her I don't think... Her he's not... I don't think he. I don't think he's gonna kill her. Eventually, she's gonna do something. She's gonna. She's gonna have machinations that are so good. She thinks that he can't do anything to stop her. But he is at the point where he doesn't give a shit. We are waiting for the moment where he just cuts loose and says "fuck the world" and goes on that killing spree. Yeah. And I think she's gonna be the one to do it. Uh, that and Butcher's butthole. <laughs> that was a great bit. Like, it, we've had three seasons up to this point where, where Butcher gets close to people and then does something butchery to fuck up the relationship. And you think he's about to do it to Huey. Literally two minutes after having a heart-to-heart talk with Huey, you think yeah. he's about to stab him in the back. And he finally fucking makes a decent decision. Yeah. My question is, do you think that's Carl Urban's asshole? Uh, yeah. 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 That would be impressive. <clears throat> yeah, I do. He is the kind of guy. Absolutely. Fucking Louie. He's method. Yeah. I watched a really good documentary on Netflix. It's good. Uh, remembering Gene Wilder was the name of the documentary. I watched and a Wilder documentary. Yeah. It's narrated by him too. It, it's a new documentary, but somehow it's narrated by him. Hey, uh, I don't know how. Did they? Probably. Uh, it's really, really interesting how his career started and how it just the twists and turns how he got to where he got. Yeah, it's definitely AI. Um, it was really it's upsetting. Um. But um, the Mel uh, the Mel Brooks part where they talk about how he got the producers was was great because he was in a play with Anne Bancroft in New York and he got introduced through her to Mel and Mel's like, "You're my Leo," just instantly. You're my Leo. You're my balloon. It was all from there. How much time do they spend on Blazing Saddles? That's what I care about. Uh, I didn't know this about Blazing Saddles, that he was not the original Waco kid. That's right. There was another, an actual, like, Western star that yeah. was supposed to play. But I think he was, was he actually drunk? or was He, he was just... actually drunk and had to go to the hospital for yeah. the, are we awake? We're not yeah. sure. Are we couldn't awake? even do his intro scene. Yeah, he couldn't do that part. So he had to, in the 11th hour, pull in a ringer. And the, yeah. only, and the best person you can get was Gene Wilder. Yeah. And you can't really picture anybody else doing the world. No, he played that part so well because it was, it wasn't, it, it still wasn't a normal character for him. He, but it, he played it so well. Him and Cle, Cleavon Little had such great chemistry together. It wasn't. He wasn't playing him as a cowboy. He was. He no, was he wasn't playing him as a guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I would watch the shit out of a Gene Wilder document, documentary. That'd be pretty yeah. great. Uh, really good. Before we get to the main event here, uh, mm-hmm. uh, James and I, episode seven of X Men ninety seven now. Okay, you guys blew through it, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he was gutted at the Gambit death. Oh, that's important. Because having no real history with these characters right? and already having a connection to one of them. Yeah, that's why. I'm sure he's the most charismatic, literally the most charismatic yeah. X-Man. He, st- Morph is still his favorite. He, uh, he, he's digging Storm, especially after the whole bit with the, uh, the fucking owl 
motherfucker. Oh, yeah, the adversary. I bet his jaw dropped when she lost her powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was shit-talking Professor X <laughs> for up and leaving the X-Men uh, to go be with an alien woman. I don't remember. Are you at the classroom scene yet? Has he seen that? Yeah, thing? he saw... He, he, I mean, okay. he enjoyed it, but, like, he was just like, if things have always been so bad for them, like, why... Why did he just not come back? I was like, it's a good question, how isn't it? He thinks Scott's funny, but like... I'm like, the problem is, is you're only introduced to the animated... The only good version of Scott Summers is in the comics. This is the second best version. Sure. Because it's a lot better than the original run. Yes. It's a lot... It is so much better than live action. Yeah. There has not been a halfway decent live action Cyclops no. ever. Um, but he is he is enjoying. Oh, enjoying. and he thought Rogue fucking tossing Cap's shield was great. I I love ballistic Rogue. Yeah. Wait till he gets to that finale. I know, oh, so dude. Good. I know. So many fucking faces popping up. Oh yeah, he he popped. He popped hard at, at Calf, and in my head, I was like, wait, kid. Wait. <laughs> so that's, uh, that was some high-quality stuff on Disney yeah. Plus watching. Now, uh, now for some mid-quality. I'll, mid? I'll mid-quality. Mid is putting it, you, you're setting it high for mid. Well, episode three. Because uh, the first two, I was not very content with. Right. They were, they kind of happened. Okay. Here's, here's my fucking problem. I said it last week. Joe wasn't here. But, like, it's very, it's shot very BBC quality show. Right? It's, it's a huge world that they're trying to play in, but they don't have the budget to play in it. I, I don't know if that's the problem or if they, they I remember hearing they didn't use the volume. And you can, you can fucking mistake. tell. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can it's tell. It's a huge mistake. There, there are places where you can use the volume and make it look so much more broad uh, on such a tighter budget. It but legit, they want to make it real. It legit looked in episode two like they shot in Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> with how true. fucking tight all the corridors were. Yeah, that city didn't look right. No. There's just something off about it. No. I just, I just want to put it to the record. I don't. I didn't hate it for why the trolls hated it, because that part made sense. You're on a planet full of women. Of course they're going to be together. That made sense. I think the writing sucks. I'm not a fan of the dialogue. The writing, the writing is terrible. Not even just the writing. It's the, the acting. acting. The acting was awful. It's bad. It's really, really bad. Like, and yeah. and my problem is, yeah, of course, it's a plan full of women. You know, whatever. But, like, that now rewrites the whole fucking Darth Vader thing. Well, this is what I thought was going to happen. Because they made them out of the force, or the thread, as they put it. Mm. Um... And this is all going to lead into Plagueis creating Anakin through life. It's like this is. I think it it just establishes more continuity. It doesn't necessarily does it does it establish it. So I feel like it kind of fucking spits in its face. No, I think it's 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 a hat on a hat. We've already done this gimmick, but now we have twins. Now they're really pushing the duality thing. Like that's the thing I don't I don't get. May's motivation. No, I didn't either. It's psycho horror movie shit. It's like you can't leave, I won't let you. Yeah, Why? I'm gonna kill because you. I won't let you. It's it's pure evil. It's just like destruction for destruction's sake, and which is okay, kind of classic Star Wars, but there's usually more depth to it. But I'm gonna light this fireball and now everybody's dead. <laughs> Yeah, That's there's a lot I there I don't get. Like, what the fuck happened? I don't and get the, the builds up. Everybody's dead. 
and yeah, there's, but I think that plays into what the Jedi did wrong and why that one guy decided to kill himself. Why, like, yeah, they're... they obviously have something to to answer for. But I, yeah, back to the writing. There, there's moments where they can be poignant, where they're just making mm-hmm. stupid decisions. Mm-hmm. Like they get yeah. they get Osha back on the ship, and instead of having her just espouse all the shit that just happened to her, like stuff she already knew, Saul is telling her. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, uh, May lit a fire, everyone's dead. She just saw all that shit. Yeah. It should have been what the hell happened, and she's got to tell the story that she just experienced. And they gotta be like, wow, that's we're really sorry for you. Come with us, we'll try to help you. They just laid out so much shit in that scene, so clunky. Like we've already seen the most inept Jedi in the second episode. Uh, in this one, they were just wait. Which oh. which, which inept Jedi? The oh, Cassie's just kind horrific there. The ones who just let the the dude just get away. Just oh yeah. The, chunky boy there or yeah fucking the one who's like who's trying to make friends with that one like yeah they're what the fuck? they're schlubs on the outskirts so it almost makes sense but they are jedi they should be doing a better job there's yeah they're still jedi like uh, it is unfortunate I, i'll it, always take some star wars and try to enjoy as much as i can out of it but it isn't good no i i just hope this episode four is just give me something better just give me this. Give me something to latch on to. I'm at the. I'm at the point where like. This next episode is probably it for me. Well, you have a lot of shit going on. I got. I got nothing. I'll watch the whole thing, but by the end, I this could be the first Star Wars thing I hate watch. Like, like if they don't connect with me on some level, I'm just gonna back around. That's this what I'm thing. saying. It'll be four episodes in. And like, even at, even though the book of Boba Fett was what it was, at yeah. least it yeah. gave me things to be like, ah, that's cool. Yeah, there were moments you're like, oh, all right, oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay, he's he's joining the Sand People. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, Sand People rituals. Uh, Not uh, bad. Yeah, it's cool. He's going. Yeah, Lawrence of the Arabia, Lawrence of Arabia moment. Awesome. Book oh, of Boba Fett that, looked that. like it belonged in that fucking universe, though. Yeah, that's the High Republic. The High Republic is a different time. And if you I, don't un- land I understand right, that, but the problem is, is it's supposed to be a better time, and it looks fucking worse. Well, that's because they're on an outskirts. They're on a. Sh- a Stop shelter. apologizing for shoddy craftsmanship. Well, no, no. The, the places look crappy because they're crappy places. Well, the places the look, filming looks crappy place, because it's poor listen, cinematography. A place can look crappy because it's on the outskirts of somewhere, but still look better. On fucking yeah. camera. Like, it's just... It's not good. That there's... there's I, There's been no redeeming factor of this show for me. It's very underwhelming. Extremely. Like, I'll take episode 9 over fucking Accolade right now. And... Like, and it's, it's a shame because the concept... Like, on paper, this is mm-hmm. everything I want. I don't want... Oh, yeah. No more Skywalker stories. Cool. You're going to show me the before times 100 years ago? Great. But, like, this is how you're going to fucking show it to me? This is what you're going to do? You're going to you're gonna get the C-list players from your local theaters to come in and do a fucking Star Wars? Oh, no, man. Like, you had dance a... dance was how, so fucking bad. How the fuck do you lead your first episode off with... Fucking, uh, oh shit, why am I blanking on her name? Carrie Ann Moss. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool, this is gonna have something to it. And then you fucking kill her, and I go, oh, that's why. Well, we all knew that was happening. Yeah, I was but, surprised they are doing a flashback, and even, she had more time. Yeah, but like, I don't know, man. But, uh, it, they set it up to be what looked like a very dark, ominous story. And it's the brightest thing they've done in a while. There's no edge to it at all. I no. like. Uh, it's hurtful. It really is not as good as it could be. No, like, I just want like, just give me something good. Like, everything about that episode was just bad. Like, the the chant, the CGI fucking old witch. 
Yeah, that wasn't great. That was unbelievable. No. Too. That was like, unfortunate. Ever since I, I watched... Oh, I think God. it was better than the first two in a lot of ways, but it still has so many fucking issues. I don't know, yeah. man. Like, At least... ever since watching Godzilla Minus One with that budget, and Godzilla, the, the, the fucking special effects, and the CGI looked absolutely beautiful. And you know, this had a higher budget, and it looked like ass. It does look like ass. Yeah. Just not the best time. It's not feeling it. All right. News. Let's plow through some news. I love fighting games. I think we've all loved fighting games in our time. And there might be no better purveyor of fighting games than Capcom. And there might be no better series of fighting games than the stuff they did with Marvel. And there might be no more annoying fact that you can't get any of this shit on the PS4 or PS5 until now. Marvel Capcom's Fighting Collection Arcade Classics is coming out this year. It will have X-Men Children of the Atom. Marvel Superheroes, Marvel Capcom Clash of Superheroes, Marvel Capcom 2, New Age of Heroes, Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and the Punisher beat-em-up arcade game where you can play as him or Nick Fury. Nice. I got Kyle's attention. That's, that's excellent. Yes, great news. Uh, yeah. Limited. Hmm? I'm never going to play it, but that is excellent. <laughs> Well, I'm going to buy it, so if you're ever around, you can at least throw it down a little. Uh, the releases, though, this is an odd selection to me. PS4, sure, that makes sense. Why wouldn't it? It's still a viable system. PC, uh-huh. sure, everything can come out on the PC is easy enough to program for. And Switch. Uh-huh. And that's it. Yeah. Like, there's no PS5 version. But it doesn't really need to be, since, you know, that's at least a little backward compatible. But load times are way faster if you program for something on PS5. So that would be nicer. No Xbox. That's just weird to me. Well, they said fuck you, Xbox. I said fuck you, Xbox, a while ago, but there are people who still have them. Yeah. Maybe the Microsoft thing? I don't know what it is. I'm not loving the price. It's fifty bucks. That's a bit excessive to me. I it feel is like that's... seven fucking games in one. Yeah, but it's seven games and they're all twenty plus years old. Yeah, but nostalgia is a hell of a drug. It is. I'm, I'm saving up all my Sony bucks, and I haven't had anything to buy with it. So yeah, I'll probably end up buying this. That's pretty great news, though. That that makes me all the happy. Uh, the Ultimate Universe is back in full swing. And because there's an Ultimate Spider-Man, there must be an Ultimate Sinister Six. He announced, the line has been announced, lineup has been announced. Uh, very odd. Very weird. The, the leader of this group will be the Kingpin. Mysterio and Craven the Hunter, the Ultimate Universe versions of them, will be introduced here. Black Cat will be on the team, but it won't be Felicia Hardy. It'll be her father. Oh. Yeah. Mr. Negative. And rounding out the group, Mole Man. A classically Fantastic Four villain who really doesn't have much himself. He's basically a Pokemon trainer without all the glitz will be joining the Sinister Six. So, yeah. I mean, given the fact that it's been a very interesting story thus far, I'm not going to shit on it out of the gate, but I wonder how all these characters are going to play together. Very odd. Very odd indeed. Danny McBride, Jeff Fradley, and John Carceri, I believe these are all the guys who have worked together on uh, the Halloween movies lately and the Righteous Gemstones, are rumored to be writing a Booster Gold film. Now, I wouldn't have initially thought Danny McBride to write any kind of superhero movie, but him putting arrogant-ass words in Booster Gold's mouth, this is a pretty excellent fit. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. 
still in the rumor though. So time will tell. Oh, my final story. Who else is looking forward to this Blade movie? Huh? Who else can't wait till they make the, the Blade <laughs> movie that premieres in the MCU? Huh? Who's who 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 can't wait till they finally figure out who's gonna direct this friggin' thing? Because uh Yeah. Yeah. Current or most recent director, Jan Demange Demange, who is uh previously worked on Lovecraft Country. That would have been a really good snag. Is out. Original director, Basim Tariq. Yeah, many months ago. So now, very nebulous, floating out in the ether. No names attached to it. Uh, In our group conversation, we threw a few around the other day. I'm super duper hoping that Benson and Moorhead, the guys who directed The Endless, Resolution, uh, Something in the Dirt, but have also done work for Marvel on... Loki, they did a lot of Moon Knight. They did about half of Moon Knight, and they're directing every episode of Daredevil Born Again. I can't help but feel like they're being groomed to take over uh, a theatrical film. I feel the opposite, and I think that's too much exposure to them, so I threw out Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele would be an excellent choice, I think, but I'm convinced he's too into his own stuff. I don't think he'd want to play in someone else's playground right now, especially since he has his own production company. He's at the point where he's producing other people's directorial debuts. He's he's moguling, and they don't necessarily want to get involved with moguls, even though they signed a deal with Rock. No, it's Disney signed a deal with Rock. <laughs> it's totally different. Doesn't mean he's going to do anything Marvel related. Yeah, sure, it doesn't. Yeah, I'm thinking that the that Benson and Moorhead are going to be the next uh, Russo brothers. I wouldn't go that far. Well, not as far as scale goes, but they're going to do the same thing with them. Bring them up, t- test them on smaller stuff, and then give them, give them a big name to work on. Doesn't seem like a crazy idea to me. That's all the news I've got. Okay, here we go. So last week we talked about Joey Chestnut being dropped out of the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest because of his deal with Beyond Meat. Then literally, like, a few fucking hours later they announced that Kobayashi, who was supposed to be retiring from competitive eating, and Joey Chestnut are doing a one-on-one hot dog eating contest for Netflix. Oh, God. Okay, Tyson beating the shit out of uh, Logan Paul, was it? I can't remember which one it was. Jake? Jake, which, Jake yeah. okay. That would make me watch. I wouldn't pay, but I would watch. Yeah. I, I, I don't care when the results come in for the Nathan's Contest. I'm not watching a full special for a it. A Netflix live event, Chestnut versus Kobayashi, Unfinished Beef. Live on oh, Netflix... Oh. Monday, September 2nd. So instead uh, of 4th of July weekend, it's Labor Day weekend. Biatch! Shouldn't it be unfinished soy product shaped into the hot dog? It's a tofu dog. <laughs> Impossible to eat dog. I can't believe <laughs> it's not dog. <laughs> I can. Ugh. <laughs> <clears throat> for the first time ever you're going to be able to play as Zelda f- in Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom a new top down uh, Link to the Past-esque looking Zelda game for the Nintendo Switch why does it took them that long? Link is the damsel in distress in this one Okay. And uh, I look forward to this. It is all part of the Nintendo Switch going out with a bang and not a whimper. Announced in their Nintendo Direct today. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is dropping June 27th. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom drops September 26th. 
Super Mario Party Jamboree, October 17th. Mario and Luigi Brothership, November 7th. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD on my birthday, January 16th, motherfucker. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, 2025. And Pokemon Legends Z-A, 2025. Nintendo is not holding back. No. Nope. Which two better be backwards compatible? <laughs> and the and they're also doing a Dragon Quest three three remake for the Switch before it ends, which makes me happy. I like the Dragon Quest games. That's that. The director's gone. Speaking of the Rock's deal, yeah, he's got a first look deal, apparently with Disney, which is making some people think that. There's some validity behind the rumor of the Rock the Dwayne Johnson coming into play. Apocalypse. Uh, Apocalypse. He'll play Arocalypse? Yeah. Now, I, I cannot but think this was them being like, hey, uh, so you're coming back from Moana live action, right? In Moana 2? Am I? <laughs> I don't remember saying that. Let's sit down. Let's open up your checkbook. Let's talk about this. <laughs> it really would be. They had no set plans, and he's really had them over a barrel. So, yeah. 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 They didn't have much choice. In a shocking move, Sony Pictures has announced that it has acquired Alamo Drafthouse Cinema. Yes, Sony Pictures Experiences will now manage Alamo Drafthouse movie theaters. Sony pledges that it will preserve Alamo Drafthouse as a distinct movie dining experience, but fans of the very specific energy Alamo Drafthouse brings to the table are understandably nervous about this big change. Uh, that's weird, man. That's a that's an out-of-left-field one. Yeah. Tarantino's probably shitting himself. Yeah. I am a huge fan of Adventure Time. Loved the first series. Uh, the Fiona and Cake spinoff they have on Max is pretty solid. And um, they just announced that a new Adventure Time movie is coming. And so, Animated? Yes. And some spinoff shows are in development. This makes me very happy. Yeah, never could get into it. Dude, it's, despite the uh, John it, DiMaggio of it. It's good. It's good. Robert Pattinson and a and the Smile director are teaming up to remake an 80s horror movie. The horror movie Possession is getting a remake more than four decades after the original's release. Possession. Possession. 1981 horror film, Possession. I'm still dealing with the fact that 1981 was more than 40 years ago. Yep. Okay. I was a foreign film, I'm guessing, because I'm starring Sam Neill, and I don't think he came over here until the mid-80s. A woman starts exhibiting increasingly disturbing behavior after asking her husband for a divorce. Suspicions of infidelity soon give way to something much more sinister. Dun, dun, dun. It was the original slug line. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens with this new one. James Gunn has confirmed Creature Commandos, the first project in the new DC Universe, will premiere on Max in December. Man. I didn't think they were that far along with it. Yep. Yeah. And also, Gunn had to set the record straight that they haven't even begun casting for the DCU Batman, as more rumors have swirled online about potential people.
Does anybody remember the show Totally Spies? It's a cartoon. I remember it existed. Yes. Uh, none of us really watched. Well, apparently, totally it's getting a live nope. action. It's getting a live action TV series with Will Ferrell heading it. I do remember seeing something about this, but uh, didn't dive into the story itself. This was a weird one. Uh, he's going to serve as an executive producer on the show. Yeah, I didn't think he'd be showing up in episodes. Although you never know with him. You never know. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking he probably will. He makes uh, he makes a cameo in this season of The Boys. Oh, does he? Yes, he does. And the last bit of news I have before we get into Kyle's favorite section. Inside Out 2 made some money this weekend. $155 million opening weekend. Ooh. In this day and age, mm-hmm. and you know, in this type, that's yeah. really fucking good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> is the biggest opening weekend of 2024 so far. Theaters aren't dead. It's just you need something to draw people in. Yeah. You need a reason. Uh, yeah. They're tracking Deadpool and Wolverine to have a $200 million opening weekend, 200 to $230 million opening weekend. And the company that tracked that generally underestimates stuff. Yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine is going to fucking break definitely any box office record for the year. And I'm, I'm, it'll be one of those movies that we haven't seen in a while where it's going to stay at its opening weekend level for at least two to three weeks. Yeah, yeah. it'll hang on. Yeah. yeah. Beyond word of mouth, it's just yeah. one that so many people, the, the, the people who just can't get around to opening week mm-hmm. will absolutely be seeing it. Yeah. Like, I've spoken to people who don't go to the theater and they're like, you know, I think I want to go see this. We actually started watching uh, Deadpool 2 with James the other night. Uh, We got about halfway through. And he can kind of appreciate Cable. He, so he goes, he, it takes two seconds and he goes, wait, is that Nathan? Nice. And I was like, yes, yes it is, kid. Uh, watching it again, because it's been a while since I've watched the second one, Ashley and I were both like, I forgot how fucking funny this movie was. It is fucking hilarious. It is, it is funnier than the first one. Have you ever watched the, uh, the alternate cut? The PG-13 oh. version? No, no, the, uh... The, the super the, duper cut? Yeah, the super duper cut. The super duper cut's great. I, I have the, like, when you buy I the I think Blu-ray, we have. I think I have. I don't know if she has. Uh, it's longer. It's got a few jokes switched out. The whole opening sequence where he's traveling the world, killing interesting people, the uh, the bathhouse bit yeah, in long. Japan is about two minutes longer, I think. And it's set to uh, Caribbean, not a Caribbean blue. It's set to an Enya song. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Uh, oh, why can't I think? Is it that, that song. You guys know that song. Well, hold up. I, I'll just have to go to my library and my <laughs> phone. Because, yes, that's right. I own the very best of, of Enya. It's in here? It's not Orinoco Flow. It's not Car- I'm pretty sure it's Caribbean Blue. You know, I'll, I'll know in a second. I just got to turn it on. That's right, folks. I love Enya. Fuck you. I don't care. I'm pretty sure it's this song. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking hilarious watching him shove swords up people's asses. Yeah. <laughs> to Enya. It's but, a great uh, scene. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, classic. It's going to make good money. Okay. It's Lots time it. for the food news. Cold Stone Creamery getting in on the Minions deal with a ice cream cake. 
Well played. Well played. Layers of moist yellow cake and despicable despicamalo ice cream with yellow and blue sprinkles wrapped in fluffy white frosting featuring Mega Jerry. And they have the Mega Minion Marshmallow Meltdown. Despicamalo ice cream, chocolate chips, marshmallows, and yellow and blue sprinkles. How have they not done a Minions ice cream that's banana flavored? They have it at Universal. Okay. I figured that was too much money to leave on the table. Yeah. Uh, The... Walmart brand of, like, sparkling water, the Clear American, has a Skittles-flavored sparkling water now. It's called Candied Rainbow. Uh, Clearly, they're not just going to outright say Skittles. Okay, so it's Skittles-inspired? Yeah, so it has Skittles-esque candies on the label, and it's called Candied Rainbow. Bubbly. Is dropping a Target exclusive flavor, melted ice pop, cherry, lime, and raspberry flavor. So bomb pop is definitely the the flavor of the summer. Oh yeah, it's the winner. Doritos flaming hot Thai red curry is coming this fall. Have you guys seen the peelable gummies that they have at uh, Walgreens? What? Yeah, so they're mango gummies, and you can peel the outside skin off, and the inside looks like the flesh of a mango. Uh, You can eat it whole, or you can have the fun of of peeling it. This is, these gummies are big in Japan. I don't know if I like the term the flesh of a mango. I know it's accurate, and I'm not questioning, but I don't know if I love that sound. I mean, it's real, though. Wait, the skin, when you hear, like, the skin of a fruit, yeah. I don't think so much. And then, like, the, the actual fruit inside, yeah, the flesh. I don't always think of it as the flesh. It is, I know it's, it's accurate. It, yeah. uh, they have gummy bananas now with a with a peelable outside peel. And you can eat both gummies. Uh, coming this spooky season, Welch's Juiceful's Monster Splash. In pumpkin, ghost, and skull shaped, they're like uh, Welch's version of Gushers. You can now get your Hooters wings in your freezer section. In buffalo, smoked, and popcorn chicken. Hooters wings. Hooters. So, like, you're. You're paying money to Hooters just for the food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fun fact. Hooters makes an incredible grilled cheese. I'm a big grilled cheese guy, so uh, I'll take your word for it. It's very good. It's on Texas toast. It's delightful. Well, it's Texas positive. Toast. Yeah. Texas toast is always good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Cheetos Crunchy Salsa Con Queso. Dropping this fall. That actually sounds really good. It does fucking sound good. <laughs> yeah, let's not it does lie. Sound really let's not good. lie. And the the cr- yeah, and it's crunchy Cheetos. Like this is gonna be fucking tasty. Yeah, I love myself some cod queso. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's sugar. The overpriced candy store mm-hmm. now has soda uh, flavored like candies, like Swedish fish flavored soda. And Sour Patch Kids Blue Raspberry Flavored Soda. And now, god damn it, I might have to drink soda. Well, it's probably not caffeinated. Yeah, it's, yeah. So with, you got that. With the sugar. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure you eat a fair amount of sugar. I know you've tried to pull back, but... I do. I do try to not eat that much of the sugars. Uh, KFC is testing new frozen drinks. Icy Blue Raspberry, Icy Blackberry Lemonade, and a Frozen Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning being tested for the KFCs near you. They are so desperate. They're also testing in New York, New Jersey, and Tennessee locations a KFC Chicken Quesadilla. Shit, I think I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. Depending on how See? Prepared. See? Yeah. You know what's really sad? Uh, you ever... You ever head into like LBI down Route 71 and you see there's 
a Chick Fil A, Panera Bread, and then a KFC. KFC. But like the direction they're going in, yeah, the direction they go in is like if you're driving down the road, it's KFC first, yeah, in its own parking lot, then Panera in and Chick Fil A in there in a separate yeah. one. Maybe two cars at any given time in the KFC parking lot. Maybe. Mm-hmm. While there's fucking cars hanging out into the road sometimes oh, yeah. at Chick-fil-A. Yep. Feels so bad for KFC. Oh. Now that they got Popeyes right by ShopRite too. Yeah. I was just, just going to bring up the same thing. Yeah. They probably have even less people than KFC. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you got Wendy's over there with their chicken sandwiches. <laughs> Campbell's is coming in hot with new spicy soup flavors this fall. See what I did there? See? Hot, spicy. Kinda. Spicy nacho cheese soup, spicy buffalo style cream of chicken, spicy chicken noodle, and spicy tomato. I'm intrigued on the spicy nacho cheese soup. Like, is it like a tortilla soup? I, I don't know, but I'm sure that that could be added to some other things to make a really fucking delicious chicken dish. Yeah, that, that sounds really good. <laughs> you can also get new spicy chicken broth and spicy beef broth from Swanson this fall. Jamba Juice, who hasn't been relative in about 15 years, is getting relative. into... Huh? I said relative. relevant. I said relative. said relative. No, I said relevant, didn't I? No? I had Jamba Should Juice last week. <laughs> Relative to this conversation, you definitely did not say relevant. I'm pretty sure I said relevant. Or at least I thought I said relevant and relative. Yes, you, did. You, know. you absolutely thought you did. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. They have fruit snacks now. <laughs> because people stopped getting their overpriced sugar juice. I don't even know where there's still a Jamba Juice. I uh, Were they in malls? New York, North Jersey. Yeah, it was the thing. They were they were cool. starting to pop up almost as frequent as Starbucks. And then no. But now you can Orange get Orange Julius disappeared. F- fucking Orange Julius was amazing though. Don't make that face. Kyle, you were probably too young. Mike, you remember, right? I remember. Orange Julius was that good? Yeah, it was remember, fucking delicious. I remember. I had Orange Julius when I went to Wisconsin, Wisconsin, and uh, I didn't think it was that good. Maybe it was just the one I went to. I mean, when when was that though? That was probably more recent, right? I'm talking like '80s Orange it was Julius. Was 2000, 2005 or six, six, yeah. 2006? I'm talking '80s Mall Orange Julius. Something about it, right? Grab an Orange Julius. A hot Sam's pretzel. None of that fucking oh. Annie Ann's bullshit. Yeah. Oh, hot Sam's. Go over to the go to the arcade across from the movie theater. The smell of BK wafting in with oh. with teenage sweat and the musty smell of quarters stacked on a fucking arcade cabinet. Yeah. Find a chick your age, ask her to give you a hot Sam. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to dip it in cheese first? Yeah. Ann's House of Nuts kiosk in the middle of the fucking mall. Yeah, Mike knows. Oh, man. Dude, you're bringing me back. Yeah. You're <laughs> fucking welcome. Well, uh, none of that's near, None of that's important. Jamba Juice has two flavors of these snacks. Mango Agogo and Strawberry Surf Rider. Those are dumb. Those are bad names. You know what's nice, though? Gusher's bringing back the watermelon flavor Gusher after, I don't know, I think it's been since the early 2000s. Watermelon and sour apple being packaged together again. Delicious. Pringles still dropping new flavors. Sweet chili sauce flavored Pringles available now. I like some sweet chili sauce. They gonna do a hot honey? They they have a hot honey. Yeah. They do have a hot honey. Yeah, everybody's got I, a hot I'm honey. I'm joking about it, and of course, DiGiorno and Deadpool and Wolverine are teaming up for four new flavors of pizza. 
spicy wolvie pie is pepperoni, chorizo, and bacon. Okay. Yeah. I need okay. that. The, yeah, I, yeah. the Wade Special Pineapple and Black Olive. Oh, from the first movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. The Gimme Chimmy, Chimichanga inspired pizza topped with spicy cumin sauce, beef pizza topping, jalapeno cheddar, and mozzarella cheese. And they're missing no opportunities here. They had to make a chimichanga themed one. They're, Absolutely. Yeah. And Maximum Pep, which is, <laughs> which is sliced and diced pepperoni made with pork, chicken, and beef. I love the name. Shit, I want to try some of these. See? I know, it just sucks. DiGiorno makes me t- really blow up my bathroom. <laughs> Never had an issue with DiGiorno. It's not delivery. Uh, I was going to say Mike's going to do that anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. It's not delivery, it's your asshole, huh? <laughs> uh, Kellogg's is dropping a Wednesday Adams cereal. It's cookies and cream inspired, and it is black and white, so there you go. Walmart is putting out a spicy nacho cheese whiz can. Like, easy cheese. Spicy nacho. Spicy nacho. Fuck. I like that. Yeah, I knew so. I knew one of you would. I, yeah, I love spicy nacho. You put that on a DiGiorno and really wreck your shit. <laughs> yeah, <God. laughs> and you could follow it up with one of these two items. Mike, it might be time to go back to a 7-Eleven and experiment with chip flavors again. Mm. Because 7-Eleven's dropping a kettle-cooked honey Dijon. Mm, not, not my mustardy, so. And a cheesy garlic bread flavored potato chip. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah, uh, that's, that's fucking good. Oh. Is Kyle legit passing out? I think he's, I think he's playing with himself. He saw his eyes close and his head slowly go down. So I don't know if he was blowing himself in a I mean, his head's moving. He's breathing. So it's fine. Yeah, he's alive. That is yeah. a main concern. Uh, not to be outdone by the 7-Eleven, hers was like, hold our beer. Because they've got three new flavors of Philly for the summer. Potato pierogi. It's redundant. Very. Uh-huh. Hot stromboli. Okay. Interested. And cheese ravioli marinara. Cheese marinara, right? With the buffalo. Beep a bop of a boop. That should be the next one they put out. Beep a bop of a boop flavor. Forget about it over here. And the last food news I have. Kyle, get ready. Because it's a oh, new... Shit, he fell asleep. He didn't fall asleep. He just moved the fucking camera. It's a... No, I think it's slipping out of his hand. Oh, yeah, you think so? I think so. What, fucking narcolepsy? That was so quick, man. Like, he was he was looking at us, and then his eyes closed, and his fucking head just dipped. And it's continually dipped. Like, we're talking about him now. Kyle. So, he, yeah, his is the, head is going down more. Kyle. Is this the best work? Like, this is, this is a great gimmick, or he is fucking no, I can't. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe him at all. He's the fucking boy who cried wolf. He could legit be asleep, but I'm not falling for it. Reese's has a new peanut butter cup dropping in August. Reese's chocolate lava big cup. Oh, fuck you. Oh. Milk chocolate with its famous peanut butter filling. Mm -hmm. And inside, underneath all that, a layer of chocolate ganache. Is it molten? It's fucking molten! I need this in my life. I gotta try that. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to get our hands on that one, guys. It's gonna be like a Reese's Deladoro fudge thing. Oh, that sounds yeah. so good. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna Gosh. be it's gonna be fucking delicious. Oh. That be, it better it, like I'm expect like the bar is high for this. Yeah, don't Anything, get too built up. I just, you know, I'm expecting decadence. Yeah. It will be decadent. And then, 
And then what you got to do is you're going to have to freeze it. Oh, of course. Got to freeze it. Yeah. Yeah, you freeze the carrot. <laughs> <laughs> what we what we then do is for season 2 of Nerd ETs, we take the lava peanut butter cup and we freeze it. And we make it the frozen disc inside of a chocolate lava cake. Mm. Now, you know what this makes me want? This makes me want a molten version of the uh, peanut butter frosting cake. Yeah, see? <laughs> so good. Many agrees. Right. <laughs> okay, douches and nerds. No. Oh, we're done with food news now? Yeah, see? Oh, see, it was a fucking work. Working. Yeah, see, He's I told up. you. Can't, can't fucking believe him. <laughs> can't believe him. I figured it'd be believable because that's something that I actually can... That actually happens. Yeah. Uh, that actually is an ability that I have. I have that power. I knew it was a work because there was a slight movement when I mentioned the new peanut butter cup flavor. Because <laughs> he can't fucking help himself. When that it comes could have been to people, subconscious dick twitch. Yeah, <laughs> he heard Reese's and he's like, "Fuck, I'm too committed to the bit." I have, um, I now have two. Well, no, 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 I mean, I don't know if I like a lot of Reese's. Shut up. I mean, I, I'm sure I would like it, but I don't know that it's something that I would go out and buy myself. Like, I would buy it once to try it, and probably never again. What if it's delicious, though? What if it's the best version of the Reese's they've made? Well, see, like, I think regular Reese's are delicious, but I don't go out and buy regular Reese's. But when they're presented, like, when there's a bowl of them nearby, you get your yeah. hand up in there? Yeah. You, you go out, yeah. uh, sir. For Halloween, you you tell me that you don't buy Reese's. That's a special. I buy, I buy variety packs that's of candy. Still, so yes, I buy like a Hershey variety pack. But you but you seek out the one that definitely has the Reese's in it. Well, the Hershey's variety packs definitely have the Reese's. in Not it. Not all so. the Hershey's variety packs have Reese's in it. Yeah. No. Uh huh. No, they don't. Yeah. No, they don't because they make the Hershey's miniatures. Do not have Reese's peanut butter cups in them, and that's a variety. Why would I get? Why would I get variety packs of the miniatures to give out on Halloween? It's a variety pack, is it not? Made by Hershey's. Thank you. But why would I? Case, why would, that's not you. me searching out <laughs> Reese's. That's me but, not searching out miniatures. But but you said they all have them, and they don't. So you were wrong. What? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand what you said. Said. You ser- said that I search out Reese's. That yeah. is candy. And you said I don't. I just get the variety packs. And then I said Yes. But you search for the variety packs with the Reese's. And you said they all have Reese's in them. Well, I still actually believe that they all have Reese's because I don't think I've ever actually looked at a miniature variety pack to give out for Halloween. Right, but so I cannot confirm or deny that they have Reese's. Uh Michael, can you back me on this? I don't know that <laughs> much about bags of candy, sorry. I mean Joseph, like, you're, if you're giving if you're giving out Reese's variety packs, and they and they don't have Hershey's, and they don't have at, at a bare minimum the regular mini Hershey bars, Reese's and Kit Kat variety, probably. Variety box. Then what are we doing, Joe? We Joe, Hershey Hershey's miniatures do not have peanut butter cups, correct? Hershey's miniatures do not. Thank you. Thank you for. T- Letting me know that, Joe. I rest my case. It was of the utmost importance to my night and definitely required me taking yeah. another five minutes on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking to see the Hershey's. Well, if you bought the big, the. Oh, wait. Uh, Mindy's going nuts right now. I do see. Actually, Kyle, there is some Hershey's miniatures that does come with peanut butter cups. The Hershey's, yeah, I, I, like I, I said, I don't. I wouldn't. Up. I wouldn't have known the actual answer. The Hershey's miniatures, the Mr. Good My bars, crackles, just that. special dark, and milk chocolate. Like, well, why would you not put your top three sellers in your variety pack? There's a there's a special pack that's got the mini cup, the Hershey mini Hershey's bar, the single Kit Kat, and then the regular size Reese's cup. I think yeah. that's the one Kyle's talking about. 
because I would, I didn't really think about the the Hershey's miniature one that's got regular Hershey's and then three that I don't give a shit about. Special, it's special dark, fucking hell, really. Mr. Good yeah. Anyway, uh, I have I have two douches and a nerd. You say Mr. Goodbar? Yeah, Mr. Goodbar. I love Mr. Goodbar. Is that a Nestle product? That is not. Nope. That's a Hershey product? Yeah. That is that is in the Hershey's pack. Now we take it too long. Okay. I have one douche. Uh okay, you can go first. Uh Sony, the PlayStation Stars uh loyalty program has been down for two weeks. So anyone that's been purchasing games and stuff or playing the uh, summer of play event has no fucking clue whether or not these things will accrue toward their uh, their uh, points total. And beyond that, you can't use your points to buy games now. So this is simple. There's no fucking reason this should be down for two weeks. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Get your shit together, Sony. Fuck, fuck Sony. Yeah. Uh, my first douche of the week is Kyle Hauser. <laughs> For, for that shit he just pulled. Um, <laughs> my second douche of the week is my wife. Just spitting fire now. <laughs> oh. uh, so on Father's Day, she posted her her yearly post and attached a video from the day prior of me teaching Zach how to swim. And from a very unflattering angle, I'm, I'm all like hunched together in the pool, trying to make sure Zach doesn't drown. And it, it, it doesn't make me look the greatest, right? I'm not standing tall. The shoulders aren't back. Chest isn't out. It's not, it's not my favorite thing. And, uh, you know, not thrilled about it. And if I were to do shit like that if i were to post a picture that isn't her good side or a video that doesn't have the best lighting or whatever i would get yelled at for i wouldn't hear the fucking end of it you know what i i agree i actually agree with you justin and you know why i agree with you shocking because because I feel that too. Every picture that's been posted of me <laughs> on social media in the past eight years has been from an unflattering angle. Every single one. And you know what? I'm sick of it, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I I should get approval. Yeah. So what I wish... Like, hmm? like, how hard is it just to take, you know, pictures of, of my, my good angles? There's so many of them. <laughs> like, I don't know why people just can't get the good ones. What, what did she say when you brought this up to her? She like, absolutely brought this up to her because she deleted it from her post. She did. Uh, because I was like... the worst. Justin, you're my douche of the week for doing that to your wife. <laughs> Listen, it happened because I was on the phone with my buddy Joe. And he was he was busting my balls. He's like, you gotta start hitting the gym again, bro. I was like, I only weigh 189. The picture from last year, asshole. No, I was like, I only weigh 189, bro. Like... It was a. It was. I'm all trying to make sure Zach's not drowning. Like I'm not standing tall and shit. Like don't ride my dick. And he's like, "This is for all the years. Was, all the years of what? I never called you fat, but fuck. I was just trying to help you lose weight. I was just like, I didn't call you fat. I just called you butt fuck. Is that what you just said? <laughs> no, I said I didn't call you fat. You butt fuck. I was, but you didn't call him fat, you just called him butt fuck. How did I? No, I didn't call him fat. <laughs> I was calling him a butt fuck fat. Well, one, is, one might be worse than the other, I'm just saying. So I'm like, you know, I was just, you would sit there and be like, oh, I need to lose weight. And it'd be like, bro, you just gotta do what you gotta do. I gotta encourage him. And you were just like, yeah, butt fuck, you gotta lose weight. <laughs> yeah. But remember, I'm not calling you fat. I'm just saying yes. <laughs> Listen, come down. I want you to lose weight. I just want you to, I want you to be the best you you could be. So Ashley's like, if I knew you felt that way, I wouldn't have posted it. And I was like, you didn't even ask. <laughs> and I said, if I would have done that shit, you would have killed me. And she laughed and agreed. And now the video doesn't exist. You know what? I think you should just let her live her life. 
That's what I think. I didn't tell her to remove it. She did it on her own. Thank you. Right, you just guilted her into removing it. Didn't even guilt her. It was a funny conversation. You just stared at her. Didn't even do that. Um, my nerd of the week is one James David Patterson for quite possibly the best interaction he's ever had with my sister. It's Father's Day morning. We're running to the store to pick up a few things because, of course, I'm cooking breakfast for everybody. My dad was coming down because Kelly doesn't know how to schedule herself correctly. Now, when I got roped into this, I said to my sister, okay, cool, we'll split the bill for the breakfast stuff. And she goes, okay, I will get, I'll, I'll do that, and then I'll bring fruit, too. And I was like, okay, no problem. Sunday morning, driving to produce. James texts Kelly and asks her what time she's coming. Kelly gives him the time, and I say... He tells me, and I tell him, well, text her and you know, ask her if she got the fruit yet. To which Kelly responds to him, no, I didn't get fruit because I gave him the money for the stuff. And so I go, that's not what the deal was. And Kelly goes, I'll just grab it on the way there. So I tell James... Tell her just to grab munchkins instead. Because we were having breakfast late. Zach would have already eaten. But I know he would have sat down and had some chocolate munchkins. If they were there. And then I could have actually eaten breakfast with everybody and, and you know, hot. We wouldn't have had to do our rotational dining like it's, it's you know, as is normal. So Kelly goes... Munchkins, the donuts from Dunkin' Donuts, to which James responds to her, no, the little people from the Wizard of Oz, Kel. I, I, <laughs> that's glorious. Of all the Kelly moments, that's, the, that, that beats the Nina Pinta Santa Maria. <laughs> yeah. So I fucking, he tells me that he texts her this. And I, Ashley and I both hysterical, right? She shows up Sunday morning and she is fucking livid. She comes That's in the house. Question. She comes in the house and she goes to James. You know, I could take. I will take that shit from your father because he's my brother. But I will not take that from you. And I'm laughing in the kitchen. And she comes in and she's like. And don't you tell him to write things like that. And I was like, oh, no, no. He did that on his own. <laughs> yeah, that's 14 years of influence right there. Yeah. And then, then I followed up with, she opens up the Munkins. And Keith goes, there's not a lot of variety in here. And I'm like, well, what's in there? And he's like, it just looks like glazed in the sugared. Kelly's like, well, it was supposed to be blueberry glaze and sugar and I was like blueberry she's like well yeah and I was like why not chocolate and she goes well they didn't have it on the app I'm like you ordered munchkins from the fucking app she goes yeah and I was like why wouldn't you just go in there she's like well do you know what it's like to run into that Dunkin Donuts on, on Jimmy Lee's I was like yeah I've gone in there for munchkins before to which Keith then goes well we went inside for coffee are you oh. fucking kidding me no no. But did she do the head turn? Like, she sold me out? Yeah. Did she not realize? She, no, no. She absolutely was like, motherfucker. And I was like, oh, you went inside for the coffee, but you couldn't be bothered for the two extra seconds to be like, chocolate munchkins? Yeah. Fucking addicts. Yeah. Oh. oh, and fuck, and fuck those people that scalp dining reservations in Disney because, again, we can't get fucking sci-fi dining theater because it it fucking goes so fast. Them motherfuckers with uh, Space 220? 
Yeah. With just the lounge. I don't care about the restaurant. Just the lounge. Bro, we got every other restaurant we needed to get. No problem. Tons of times. 6 a.m. yesterday. Right? Ashley and I mm-hmm. ready to go. Mm-hmm. Get on there. First thing we shoot for. hoop de doo review. The 615 sold out, so that's a no-go. While I was doing that, she was looking for sci-fi. The only sci-fi they had at that point, at 6 a.m., was a fucking 8.30 and an 8.45, and we have an 8.50 for fucking Ogas. It's, no, no, no. It's way too late to eat anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, and it's at that point. the fucking principle of it. Like... Don't, don't, I, I hate that they have these fucking websites out there where people are like, we'll get dining reservations for you, and they, they scout these fucking spots by using all these fucking bot systems. I hate it. I hate them. Yeah. Fuck all of you. I want to watch my shitty 1950s B sci fi movies roll while I'm eating a burger in the half dark. It's the ambiance, damn it. Yeah, I just want to ride up that fucking elevator. So instead, we're doing Ale and Compass for the first time ever. Ooh, uh, good. Mm-hmm. It's good. I, I like that. I love that. I love the Yacht and Beach. Yeah. It's right there. You know, we'll take the little friendship mm-hmm. boat over and shit. Mm-hmm. Joe, we'll, we'll talk my Disney dining uh, after we wrap this up. Okay. I wish Beth was here. She would get involved, but she's still at work. <laughs> Kyle is here, and it's his turn to finish it off. Uh, There he is. There we go. We just found another link link under my sink. Oh, that's fucking real. As always, if you like what you're hearing, like us on Facebook.com slash Nerdies. Follow us on Twitter at Nerdies. Email us at Nerdies.gmail.com. Check out Nerdies.com. Well, there. Fuck you. Also, tpublic.com. Search Nerdies. Click on the shop. Get your cool shirt. I'm wearing one right now. 35% off right now. Yeah, it is. You can get shirts, hoodies, cum rags, whatever, ball gags. Name it. We got it. No, don't make fucking faces at me. Nipple clamps. It's fine. And head over to Sinful Creations. I'm not by against Justin. the ideas, com. but I don't like misrepresenting. I don't think they sell those things. <laughs> well, these they have items that could be used for them. Ball gag, yeah. Nipple clamp, no, that's very specific. I don't know anything there that could be used for that. Nerdities and nipple clamp. They have pins. <laughs> they do have pins. Not piercing, no. Oh, well, it depends what you're into. Sinful Creations by Justin.com. Get sweet treats or not. Whatever. <laughs> uh... Go to youtube.com slash nerdities. Yes, you guys all know we have a YouTube channel. We need more subscribers. Hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified when a new content is coming. Because more new content is coming, including season one of Nerd ETs, which will be airing as soon as I finish editing it. Uh, then we have yeah, on a the weekly basis. The Star Wars special next <laughs> week. <laughs> Uh, we have a, uh, the final installment of the Joe Trilogy entitled The Joseph's League. We have a Halloween special. We have a Christmas special. We have a feature film in the works, and we're probably going to sprinkle little videos in between that because we like to have fun. Because we have those planned. And we, do. Party. We, uh, we need money to do this stuff because uh, things cost money. We like money, uh, and we want to give you good production and things um, <laughs> Don't want to get good production <laughs> write to us at nerdies at gmail.com because we'll croon we'll swoon we'll talk about your business and our product all right that is earth and how the eo pains and nerdies crew are idiotic and poor thought but don't next week's will be far more insulting with a fuck bye bye because of the end of civilization The Clamp Cable Network now leaves the air. We hope you have enjoyed our programming. But more importantly, we hope you have enjoyed life.